welcome to the heart of a Viking. This channel offers elementary art lessons taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I look forward to virtually creating with you. There are new lessons posted weekly. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss a single one. So go grab your art supplies and your thinking caps and let's begin. Hello HOB artists! Today I'm going to introduce you to a really cool artist named Burton Morris. Burton Morris was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and that was way back in 1964. But the cool thing about him is he is a contemporary artist. That means he's working right now. If we wanted, we could call him up on the phone and see what he was doing. I bet he'd be making some pop art because that's what he is famous for. He was influenced by some other pop artists from the 60s and 70s like Warhol, Lichtenstein, and Herring. You might have heard me talking about some of those artists too. He is one of the most famous modern pop art artists. His artwork shows a contemporary twist to traditional pop art. His artwork is cheerful, energetic, and full of color. His characteristic lines with their bright colors give his artwork a very interesting energy. And one of the best things about pop art is its relatability. That means when I see a piece of pop art, I usually know what the subject is and I can easily relate to it. So imagine that you saw a work of art with a can of soda on it. You would know exactly what it is the minute you saw it and you would be able to relate to it. Maybe it would remind you of a can of soda that you had yesterday or maybe it would remind you of a certain time where you shared a can of soda with someone special. And that's the best thing about pop art is because of the images being very recognizable, it really hits home to most people and it leads pop artists into the unique ability to have their artwork used in advertising or in the backgrounds of um, movies and commercials. So you'll see pop art all over the place, exactly like Burton Morris's. His works of art have been used in many advertising and television shows, the Olympics, and even for Heinz ketchup. So let's see how we can create our own Burton Morris inspired work of art. All right, pop artists, let's get our supplies and get our creativity caps and get started. Okay, so I have here some computer paper. It's actually copy paper. Um, it's not uh, like art construction paper, but whatever kind of colored paper you have. And I'd like for you to find a nice bright color to start with. So I'm starting with this lime green. And I'm going to start on one edge here by cutting little triangle shapes from the edge. And I want you to try to change them up. So try to make them smaller sometimes or shorter or skinnier or wider. Um, so vary them up. Don't make them all the same. And I'd like for you to go all the way across. Okay, when you get to the end, before you start doing this side, I'd like for you to actually cut a wiggly wobbly line that goes all the way from the bottom to the top. Then I'd like for you to cut the little triangle shapes. And I'd like for you to see how that looks different. I kind of like that better, but it's not something you have to do. But I like how the wiggly wobbly shape changes my whole shape of my paper. So for the other sides, you can either choose to leave them flat and straight like we did at the bottom, or you can cut a wiggle wobble along the edge before you start cutting your triangle shape. You decide whatever you like for your piece of artwork. And I'd like for you to make these little triangle cuts all along all all four sides. Okay, when you're all done, go ahead and recycle those little scraps. And this is where the black paper comes into play. We're actually going to glue the nice bright paper that you have to the black paper. And what this does is it creates contrast. That word contrast is a great word in art. It always makes art more interesting. 
Contrast is explained as the difference between two opposites. So right now I have a bright lime green piece of paper and a very dark black piece of paper. So those are opposites, bright and dark. Okay, so now once that's glued down, I'm going to get some smaller pieces of my bright colored papers. So I have a little piece here, this is a little piece of the bright pink, and I have a lot of choices. I am going to make all hearts. So I'm going to start by drawing a heart my most natural way, which is by drawing the right side of the heart and then drawing the left side of the heart. And then once it's been drawn, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And then I'll play with it a little bit and figure out where it looks good on my work of art. Okay, now I'm not going to quite glue that down just yet. I'm just going to save it off to the side. Next, I'm going to grab a different color and I'm going to make the same shape again, another heart. But this time, I'm going to make it smaller. So I cut my paper in half so I end up with a smaller heart. And I'm going to use a secret art technique called double cutting. For double cutting, you have to make sure that when we draw our heart shape, that we start the heart on the fold and we end the heart on the folded side. The folded edge is the side that you flatten with your finger when you fold your paper. So for me, it's on the left side right here. So now I'm going to take my pencil, start on the fold, draw half of a heart shape, and end on the fold. Then when I'm cutting, I have to make sure I cut through both layers of paper, not just the top. And when I'm all done, I should end up with a full heart when I open it just like that. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. And honestly, there is no requirement for how many hearts you have to make. It is 100% up to you. I want you to make some big hearts, some little hearts, some wide hearts, some thin hearts. It's 100% up to you how many hearts you make. And whenever you're working, don't glue them down just yet. Just keep making them, lay them on where you think you like them, and then when we get closer to the end, we'll talk about the gluing step. All right, let me cut out a few more hearts for me too. Okay, so now I'm going to play with these hearts and really put them in the spot that I like them best. Once I have them in the spot that I like best, I'm going to start gluing them down. I'll just flip one over at a time, put some glue on the back, and flip it right back to where it needs to be. Right now, I'm working with balance and contrast in my mind as I place these. So I wanna make sure that there's dark colors on both sides, light colors on both sides. I wanna make sure that there aren't too many hearts on the right, and then it kind of balances and equals out to the hearts on the left. So I'm trying to pay attention to a lot of different situations here as I make my decision on where I want my hearts to be. And then finally give it a flip and press it all down. Okay, now we're ready for my favorite part. I'm going to use a plain old piece of white here and I'm going to be making two different kinds of shapes, highlights and accents. A highlight is going to make the um, hearts look like three-dimensional sort of balloon shapes. So what I'm doing is I drew one and now I'm folding my paper a couple of times and I'm going to quadruple cut this time. And when I quadruple cut, I should end up with about four of these little highlights. And I'm going to place them on the same side of each of the hearts that I have here. So let me get these separated. So I think I'm going to go with the left sort of like top left side of the heart. And I'm going to place one on each of these little hearts. I didn't have enough, so I'm gonna to need to make a few more. Okay, and now I'm gonna glue those down. Because they're so small, I find it easier to put the glue on the heart shape and then stick the little highlight into the heart um, glue, but you can do it whichever way you prefer. Okay, and then next I'm going to add some accents. 
So an accent is just something that adds a little extra variety, kind of breaks up the monotony. Everything is kind of the same right now. So these little accents are going to help break it up. And I got some of these ideas from looking at other Burton Morris artwork. So I'm going to be adding a couple of white lines around my hearts or like almost like they're shooting out of my hearts or coming from my heart. You can decide where you want to put yours. Okay, and then give it a flip and press everything down. And then we have one last step. Our very last step is to trim away some of the black paper. Not all of it, but some of it. So I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to follow the contour. That means I'm following the bumps and curves of my hearts and my green paper that I started with today. And I'm basically just leaving like a little black frame around the edges. So just trimming off a little bit of this black paper all the way around. Doesn't that look so cool? Oh my gosh. Okay, one last step. I like the black contrast so much that I'm going to grab my black Sharpie and extremely slow and steady, I'm going to outline my cutout heart shapes. And when I do this, I need to go so slow because I really want these lines to be even. I want it to make it look like there is a another black heart behind the colorful heart. And this one last little step really takes this piece of artwork to the next level. It's gonna look so great. Okay, I'll meet you at the end. <laughs> Mrs. Minto, is that your head popping into the picture there? Oh my gosh, I was concentrating so much that I didn't notice that my big head was in the way. Sorry about that. Okay, back to tracing. All right, and there we have it, our finished Burton Morris heart collage. I just love this. I love the contrast between the lights and the darks and the brights in the darks. I love the highlights that we added to each of the hearts, making them look like balloons or like they're shiny in 3D. I love those accents that we added to the, um, the green paper to make it look like the hearts were moving or vibrating. Um, and I just love the outside edges with those um, triangle cuts with the black paper behind it. I hope you love yours as much as I love mine. This is definitely something that is hang up worthy. Let's hang these up in our houses and be cheerful and happy. And I'll see you back here next time at the heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.